The Fox News resident dumb guy, uh, former police officer Bo Deedle, weighed in on Freddie Gray's death, and it was bad. I'm just hoping that they did toxicology on that young man when they took him into the hospital, because I really feel mentally he was not really with it, and possibly he was on drugs. No, he's dead. My heart goes out to him and his family and all that. This is a dead man, but a lot of people don't understand. They're compartmentized in that van, in that, in that police van. So the other prison really couldn't have beaten him up. He was in it. Then they pulled over three well, he times. He said he couldn't even see him either. Well, the three times they pulled over would be consistent of him right. kicking, trying to put the leg irons sure. on. Sure. Bo, let's talk a little bit about the, Jack, yeah. uh, the, the blockbuster news, and we're going to come back to that video right there. Yeah. According to the Washington Post, uh, there was a prisoner in the van when he, Freddie Gray was put into it. Yeah. They were separated, as you said, so they don't beat each other up. He couldn't see it. But it right. sounded like, according to this uh, other prisoner, that Freddie Gray was intentionally trying to injure himself. Now, you made a point of when you watch that video, the cell cam video, if he had a broken neck, he couldn't step into the van, and he does, not in this part of it, but when we get to the back of the van, you can yeah. see him step into it. Well, let me tell you, uh, spinal cord injuries with the uh, Christopher Rees Foundation is one of my charities. He's my best friend. Here it comes right My best up here. friend's son and my president of my company broke his neck in a diving accident. Very familiar with spinal cord injury. If, in fact, his spinal cord was severed like that, there would be no way that he could have stood up like that. That's all I'm saying as far as from a medical. And we had Dr. Bodden on last night that would verify the fact yeah. that how are you going to stand up when you have a spinal cord injury like right. that? You're limp. You're finished. So it could be consistent of him banging his head into the wall. I don't want to rush to judgment. Let's wait. Yeah. Everybody well, should wait. We know, wait for we the know this. To if, you, if you, he is banging uh, around yeah. in that area, we know that he's making a lot of noise. Not strapped in. Right. Did he's you think? Did in. you think possibly when the cops were chasing him, he was trying to get away? He slipped and fall, and he made an injury. Now, by going into the van there, he made the injury worse. Maybe he slipped and fell. That's what he just said. And then when he got the injury, he made it worse from the time that he slipped and he fell. You don't sever your spine 80% when you rolled your ankle running. It's not the way it works. And the best part is in the middle there, he's like, I don't want to rush to judgment. As he proceeds to rush to judgment on virtually every issue. And naturally, I mean, we knew this was coming. We saw it from a mile away. The smearing of the victim, the smearing of the dead, unarmed kid. He said at the beginning, you know, I, what I think is they should do a toxicology report on the kid because I don't think he was in his right mind the way he was acting. Now, if the roles were reversed and uh, it was this kid killing a cop, would they say about... The cop? You know, we should, they should do a toxicology report on that cop. I don't think he was in his right mind. They wouldn't, right? So why would they call for the toxicology report on him in this scenario? Uh, if anything, why would you not call for a toxicology report on the cop? The cops involved, the people who did the killing. Why would you not talk about them possibly getting a toxicology report? They're the, they're the perpetrators. Is it, you're, you want to test the victim for drugs. This happens every time. And by the way, this is one of the main reasons why in the, uh, the initial aftermath of the Trayvon Martin situation, everybody was outraged. Because the cops did a toxicology report on Trayvon and not on George Zimmerman when Zimmerman was the guy who was alive and who killed Trayvon. He carried out the crime. Trayvon was the victim, but they tested the victim. Now, what is it? I can't figure out. I can't put my finger on it. What's the the factor that's consistent in terms of who they end up doing the drug testing on. Hmm. Couldn't be the color of their skin, could it? It, oh, it just always happens that whether the black person is the perpetrator or the victim, you always only need to drug test the black person. You never need to drug test anybody else. And then furthermore, look, I'm, I go way further on this in terms of my own opinion because what these guys never account for is they just talk about drugs as if that's the trump card. Like, that's it, guilty, drugs. What they don't say is that the overwhelming majority of drugs do not lead you to be violent. S especially a drug like weed, you're not going to be violent if you smoke weed. If anything, that helps his case, the kid's case. doesn't help the cop's case. I mean, what, maybe uh, bath salts is the one drug that if you do it, maybe you want to go fucking nuts. But there's even questions about whether or not that's as 
you know, violence or anger inducing as, uh, as they originally said it was, or alcohol maybe is one that's, uh, leads people possibly to be more prone to violence, but certainly not marijuana. Marijuana is not one of them. I would argue even cocaine, although it's an upper, it's not going to make you want to fight. It makes you happy and it makes you want to start a business. Heroin makes you want to relax and watch cartoons. These things are not going to make people more aggressive, but they act like if I just say the magic word drugs that, okay, that's enough. That kid is guilty now. Maybe he hurt his spine. Go Look, the way that they're talking about it, it's almost like they're trying to question the whole idea of, of Freddie Gray having any spinal injury at all. Now, understand, the cops have said repeatedly, they're admitting, like, yeah, he, his spine is sever was severed. Yeah. So the cops even admit, like, yeah, his spine was severed. But on Fox News, you get the feeling that they're trying to say, like, maybe he died from some other way that didn't involve his spine getting severed because the cops beat the shit out of him and drove like crazy with him in handcuffs. They're trying to push the idea that, like, uh, you know, hey, maybe it's his fault. Maybe he tripped and fell, and uh, then when he got into the van again, he further injured himself. It's never the cop's fault. He further injured himself. He fell. He was on drugs. He hurt himself getting into the van. But I don't want to rush to judgment. Of course, I don't want to rush to judgment.